I know everything is one week at a time here, but in a quiet moment, if you allowed yourself to think about the possibilities of competing maybe for postseason and knowing that it is realistic, which no one could have envisioned at one and seven. No, we just focus on the Giants. This league is too hard. Everyone's too good to kind of put your mind too far forward. So uh, we have a long uh, way before we can start thinking about that stuff. That's it. Does it feel like a different purpose now? I mean, a few weeks ago, it might, the purpose was just, oh, my goodness, like, we are better than this. Yeah. Now there actually is, you know, something more of a season that could be made out of this. Uh, yeah, to go at any any week you go in, whether you're one and seven, one and ten, is to win the next game. So uh, our mentality mentality was just that, and uh, and to the credit of the players, and you know, we all stayed in the fox, so we, we understood that there was a lot of football to play, and uh, that the season can turn around in an instant. So uh, credit to the coaches, the staff, the, the players for uh, believing in the message all the way through. But again, there's still a lot of football to be played, and. Um, you know, that's the exciting part for us. There's a lot of opportunity out there. How has it felt playing defense over the past four weeks for you guys? It's been fun, no. Um, you know, guys are making plays. Uh, we're putting pressure on, on offenses. We're forcing them to, to respond to our calls. So um, it's been fun. We've been causing havoc. And, uh, of course, there's plays here and there that we want to get back. But uh, guys are stepping up and, and guys are making plays. So that's exciting. It's fun for us. They're they're both good quarterbacks. They both played in this league for for a good amount of time. So, uh, no matter who's out there, I think we're gonna get the Giants' as best. Um, so, um, we're preparing for both. Byron, for a rookie, has Javon's handling of calls been everything you could possibly expect for a first-year player in terms of quick recognition, comprehension, comprehension conveying it? To the other members of the secondary. Yeah, no, his his growth has been impressive. His leadership, his under, his ability to understand plays and get us into the right calls. Um, for a young guy to come in and, and play like that at this level is really impressive. So uh, the goal for him is to continue to push in that direction and continue to be a leader that, that he is. But um, he's been playing well. I wouldn't tell him to his face, but uh, I want him to keep playing as hard as he can. But he's a guy that um, I have no doubt he's going to continue to be a better player. So it's fun to see that growth. Byron, what do you think changed that enabled this defense to put that kind of pressure on offenses like you just mentioned and force them to respond to you rather than you know the other way around perhaps or whatever? I think everyone just took it uh, upon themselves. I think everybody from coaches to the players looked themselves in the mirrors and said, okay, what can I do better? Um, and that, that's one thing I love about defensive guys. I, mean, I think we're a little bit different uh, than any, any other person, uh, any other people on the field. It's just like, um, you know, we take that personal responsibility uh, to, to the heart. So uh, I think a lot of guys took the time to look themselves in the mirror and ask them, okay, what can I be doing better? And, uh, and to their credit, everyone collectively came together and, and kind of got it done. But again, um, the exciting part is how much more we have to go and, and, and some of the plays that we left on the field uh, last couple of games. But that's the fun part. It's a continual journey. It's interesting that players were talking about plays you left on the field when you're coming off a game when you like give up 10 points and yeah. a 5.8, I think it was, passer rating and everything. Yeah, no, that's a, you know, it's tough to, um, you know, I, I know everyone looks at the final score. Um, but we understand that every single game that you go into, you need as many plays as you can to, to kind of push the tide and, and win the game for you. You never know which play is going to come, where it's going to come down to. Um, so uh, we don't take those plays for granted. Uh, obviously, the score was uh, one thing, but uh, we look personally on our defense and say, oh, we left some plays out there. We gave some up and we're, when we really shouldn't have. We understand that this is the NFL. The offense will make plays. Uh, but when it's on us, I think we take that uh, to the heart. All right, this is my thoughts, my, my tweets on the week. Can you talk a little bit about the information that chose to support? Yeah, so I can't even pronounce the name, so we just call it uh, CJD. Um, it's a rare uh, brain, disease, brain disease. It's a uh, prion disease, and pretty much uh, it puts you like in a late stage of like Alzheimer's. Uh, you can be a perfectly healthy person, functioning person, and um, I guess these prion proteins just denature the proteins in your brain, and you just die within the next uh, year. And it's very hard to determine exactly uh, what the issue is uh, until you're you pass away unfortunately so um, it's a rare disease but there's enough people who have experienced it and uh, every time I post the shoes and I get a lot of messages from families across uh, America just thanking me for putting that cause uh, at the forefront so um, I had a very close friend uh, pass away from that her name was Diana Hunter um, she was in her 30s she was uh, vibrant and she was um, you know she had her own job she was doing her thing um, and she passed away suddenly from that disease so 
Uh, I try to uplift that family any, any way I can. And uh, by having cleats and kind of putting it on the forefront, I think I can, uh, or I try to do my best doing that. So.